Hey, hi all. Good morning. Uh, welcome to this Python training program. So quick introduction about myself. I am Mohammed Tanvir Khan. I have around 14 years of experience in the IT industry, uh, working on uh, data related projects uh, with profiles such as uh, data analyst, business analyst, developer role. So is, uh, this is all about me. And uh, so this is the Python course we're going to start. So it was supposed to start on 5th of October, but because there were some uh, unforeseen circumstances happened in my family, so that is why we have uh, rescheduled it to 13th October. So we are starting from 13th October today. The timing will be 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. I hope my voice is audible to everyone. Can anyone please confirm? Yeah, Tanvir. Yeah, Tanvir. We can hear you. Okay, okay thanks a lot. So... It's a weekend batch, Saturday and Sunday. Timing is 8 to 10 a.m. IST. I know most of you are from my SQL batch. Uh, you have taken the SQL course from me. So you know like uh, teaching methodology and the format and all those things. But still, I will repeat it. So those who are from my the SQL batch, so the teaching uh, methodology and the process, each and everything is similar to like what you have observed in the SQL classes. So it's a weekend batch, uh, morning 8 to 10 a.m. IST, two hours. Uh, and in between, we'll take a break of 10 to 15 minutes. The duration will be three months. Uh, I try to complete it within two, 2.5 months. I have written three months here because sometimes if the session is interactive, so maybe it can extend to three months, okay? And uh, I think uh, I covered all those things. And this is the course content. And like SQL, like you you must have observed that we have started the class from scratch, right? No prerequisite is needed. So similarly here, no coding prerequisite is needed, nothing. I will request to go on mute. I'm getting some background noise. Okay, thank you. So there is no prerequisite needed for this course. It will start from scratch, very scratch. I assume that uh, you guys don't know anything about the programming world. Okay, so it will start from scratch and uh, we'll go the basics of Python and then slowly uh, we'll discuss the advanced concepts as well. The classes, objects, object-oriented programming, pandas, numpy. And then uh, we'll be having a, I can say like, a, a short project based on uh, Python at the end of this course, and that then that will be a separate three hour workshop on it. So once it will be over, okay. So now before I and uh, the format, let me quickly show you the format. Like uh, this is the platform on which we we take classes. This is a graphy platform, and I'm showing you for the previous batch. So for each and every day, you will be having the recording. Like first June, this is the recording. Second June, again, you'll be having a recording. And then the corresponding notes and the assignments. Okay. So net, net, after each and every class, you'll be having the classroom recording assignments, classroom notes. Okay. So in case if you miss a class, you can go through the recording. And this will be a lifetime access. Okay. And the session is purely interactive. Uh, you have full freedom to ask question at any point of time. So that's all. I think I have covered all the points. Now, uh, if you have any question before I proceed, please ask. Any question, anyone, about the format of the class or any other stuff? Questions? Okay. So the target audience for this course will be, first of all, data engineers. Then SQL or ETL developer. And then data analyst. Okay. And then ETL tester. These are the main target audience for this Python course. SQL ETL developer is also known as PL SQL developer. So they all are one and the same. Uh, those who are in the reporting side, Okay, like Power BI reporting or Tableau reporting. I don't think Python is that much required. Okay, it's not like a showstopper for you. 
uh, if you want to learn, it's good. It can open uh, doors for other opportunities as well for you. But for this job profiles, which I have mentioned here, it's very important. Okay. And nowadays, you know, like the importance of Python is getting more momentum because it has the capabilities to play with the data, to, to process the data, to fetch the information which you want. Okay. And you can do automation as well. So that is why it, it will really add weightage to your resume. Okay. So these are the target audience. Now, what are what are your expectations from this course? Why you want to join this course? Please go ahead. So what are your expectations? Anyone? Uh, for career transition. Career transition. Currently, uh, do you want to share like you are in which job profile? Uh, currently, I'm in uh, ETL testing. Okay, great. And you want to move into the automation testing? Yes. Okay, fine, good. Okay, so just I want to add to this. So ETL testing, very few folks know about this. And I started my career from ETL testing only. Uh, when I was working uh, for Infosys. So at that time, uh, I started my career, remember, with ETL testing. And there was a perception that testing is a very simple task, manual task. But if you're going for ETL testing, it needs the skills which are very uh, similar to SQL developer. In ETL testing, you have to be very strong in SQL, okay? Because you have to test the data which has been loaded in different tables in the different layers. And... Uh, uh, the package is also very good and it's in huge demand these days in IT industry, ETL testing. May I request to please go on mute? I'm getting disturbed. I'm getting a lot of background noise. Thank you. I have muted everyone. So those are from non-technical, okay? And uh, you don't like coding or you just want to get a job quickly. So you can try this ETL testing. For this, you have to be strong in SQL. And if you know the basics of Python and the basics of ETL, that is sufficient. And trust me, this is in huge demand. And down the line, you'll be having a new job profile, which is known as AI testing. So those who are from the ETL testing background, they will get an age there in the AI testing. Okay. So if you're in ETL testing, uh, of course, nowadays, like uh, they're looking for automation as well. Because when you are testing the two tables or multiple tables, so, uh, you, know, you know, like the client, they want you to automate it. So with the help of Python, you can automate. So in my current project where I'm working, so same thing we have done. We were loading data from Microsoft SQL Server to Snowflake. And we have to, our team has to validate uh, the data is correct or not. And we have to do certain analysis on top of it. So we have automated the entire thing using uh, Python. And we have used their Pandas, NumPy, and many other frameworks. So this will for sure help you. Okay, any other? What is... Uh, any other who wants to share, like, what is the expectation from this course? Uh, but one my... thing, uh, sorry, sorry, so, sorry for interrupting you. But one thing, that automation part, which I have told you, I will not be covering here that entire end to end automation, but that will be covered in this course. So we are planning a separate three hour session workshop where we will cover that how you can automate uh, the, the testing task if you have to migrate data. Okay. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks, Tanvir. So, uh, Tanvir, my expectation from this course is to diversify my skill set. Now, by diversifying, I mean I currently work as a lead BI developer, wherein I mostly work on uh, the BI tools like Power BI Tableau and some databases. Mm -hmm. But my project requirements from uh, the customer, <coughs> they also need... <coughs> Sorry. They also oh, need people mm -hmm. from Python. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See, one thing I want to tell you, currently, uh, most of the project in the IT industry is based on data. I hope those who are working in the IT industry, they know this. Most of the project is based on data. Now, to work on data, these skill sets are very important. First of all, SQL. No compromise on SQL. Although it's a Python class, but fact is fact. SQL is a bread and butter, no compromise here. Then Python, then any reporting tool, maybe Power BI, Tableau, but Power BI, 
is gaining more momentum these days. And then advanced Excel. My suggestion, if you want to take my suggestion, you may tell that then I'm working in Power BI or Tableau, but you never know a particular tool, how long it will stay in the market. Tomorrow, some other vendor, they will launch a new product, which will be having more features as compared to Power BI. Then the company will start shifting to that tool, right? So if you're dependent on a particular tool, so it's like you're sitting on an atom bomb. You never know when it will be decommissioned from the market, right? So always be ready with the skill sets and especially in the current market trend where there's a lot of turbulence. Nobody knows what will happen down the line because of AI, right? That is why get yourself enriched with at least these skills because I'm sure these skills can open a lot of job opportunities for you. Like if you if you know these skills, you can enter into the world of data engineer. Okay, apart from this, you have to know a little bit about cloud and PySpark. You can enter into data engineer. You can enter into the SQL retail developer, data analyst, retail tester, reporting side, business analyst. Okay, so that is why don't confine yourself. If someone knows SQL and you're very good at a data analyst, maybe some other organization, if you want to switch, they want a combination of SQL and Python. Then again, you will you will struck there, right? So that is why, especially these days, you have to get yourself enriched. At least these four, you must know. That is, as per my experience, understanding that that's fine good any other thought anyone so almost same point you told career transition a writer enriched genius please any other expectation any other question anyone feel free if you have any question or any career guidance you're looking for and try to answer it quickly and then i will jump to the demo class Questions? Perfect. So uh, already I covered like uh, the class will start from scratch. Okay, and I assume that no one knows about the programming language. So we'll start from the scratch. The duration is approximately three months. So fine, let me start then. So like or uh, SQL, when you're learning SQL, so you remember like uh, we were uh, practicing on Oracle platform, right? Oracle or Microsoft SQL Server. Similarly, if you have to practice Python, so there is a platform known as Jupyter Notebook. Okay. It's known as Jupyter Notebook. So very simple. Okay. Python, this Jupyter Notebook installation is very simple. It's not that much complicated as compared to Oracle SQL Developer. It's very simple. So I will share the link how to download it. And uh, the the path is very simple. You have to just type Anaconda installation in Google and it will navigate you that how to uh, install it. And it's very simple. I will show you the path, okay. So once you have installed it, you have to type Anaconda and you will get something like this. Is my screen visible to everyone? Yes, sir. Okay. And you so once you will install Anaconda and the installation process is very simple. So don't uh, uh, worry about it that we will how to install it. It's a very simple process. I will share the link with you. Or uh, if you want, just uh, in Google, you type uh, uh, download Anaconda or you will get a page and from there you can download Anaconda. That's all. And then you will install it and when you will launch it, you will get something like this. Okay, and please ask question if you're getting struck somewhere, if you have any question confusion, right? After that, there are multiple platforms. Few of this uh, uh, platforms are for data science, data scientist, uh, uh, and some other uh, machine learning platforms are there. But for us, this is what we need, Jupyter Notebook. I hope this is visible to everyone. This is Jupyter Lab, this is Jupyter Notebook. They both are different, okay? So really working on Jupyter Notebook. You have to click on the launch button. Once you will click on the launch button, you will get something like this. What is that? Just a minute. You will get something like this. Okay. Okay. Now, this is showing different uh, uh, files, whatever I'll be having. 
and this will be your in your local folder in c drive maybe documents or some other folder you can find all those things will be there okay and then you have to click on this new option here and then python 3 by pi kernel so a new page will open and here you can start coding right here you can write the name of your notebook so python 3 in so the installation process is very simple. And whatever you will code here, it will be saved in your local machine. Okay. How to check the folder where you are executing it, everything I will show that to you. Okay. So I don't want to confuse you with all those uh, simple cosmetic steps in the beginning. So this process is very simple. If you want to install or uninstall Anaconda, it's very simple. Any questions so far? I know there are other options as well, like those who already know Python, you must be thinking it and we I have practice on PyCharm or some other ID, or a few of you used to write uh, code in Notepad plus plus and then you execute it, that is also fine. But why I prefer this Jupyter Notebook, this is very user friendly and the features are very simple. Okay. So any questions before I proceed, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, uh, hi, Tanvi. So do we have any uh, online editor for this? Because I'm using online this laptop, and I think I don't able to download this. Achha, you are using official laptop? Yes. Achha. So we have online editor as well. I will share the link. Two, three editors are there. So, but the problem is sometimes, you know, like the online editors will be down. Okay. So, but what you can do, uh, like if you're working on your official laptop, so for sure, I have like, the PyCharm uh, uh, installed. Uh, in oh, that is fine. That is fine. Or you that can also do one thing. Free, uh, free trial version. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also do one thing. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you can connect with the help desk or service team, support team of your company. Okay. You can mm -hmm. raise a ticket. You can ask them, okay, I want to practice Python for, for my project work. Okay. They will okay. install it because this installation is open source. It is a free version. Okay. okay. So I don't think anyone will block you. And because the same thing I have, uh, I've instructed in my previous batch and each and every company, you know, like they, they allow you to install it, but you don't have to install on your own. You have to connect with the uh, tech team of your company. You, maybe you have to raise a ticket and they will install. It's not a big okay. deal because this is open source free version. Okay. If they yeah. will ask you why you want to install, you can tell that, okay, it uh, means whatever profile you're working, suppose you're working in the analysis, you can tell like, uh, I want to learn Python and for that I want to install it because this will help in my project. But if you're in testing, you can tell like I'm planning to do some automation work and that is why I need it. So I'm sure they will never stop it because nowadays the companies, they have this culture of that they want to train their employees and they're spending good amount of money on it. So I'm sure they will allow you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sometimes okay. like when you have to install some paid version or I mean some cloud platforms where they'll be charged so in those cases they need a confirmation from the client and that process becomes a little bit lengthy okay but here i'm sure they will allow you okay if okay. still it is not working let me know i will suggest a few online platforms where you can uh, you can practice okay okay but Thanks. but the okay no problem but the first priority for everyone should be to install anaconda because the reason is i i find this uh, platform very user friendly okay okay so any other question anyone no questions such a ticket can anyone tell me uh, why we need programming language uh, not only python if you're talking about java c or dot net or mainframe kabul whatever language unix shell is scripting whatever we have why we need this programming language what is the benefit Come on, tell me. Uh, I think just like uh, in Excel, we have macros, which is also a kind of programming to automate things. With Python, we can also do some automation, create some basic pipelines. Achha, thik, pipeline to both the heavy word, bol di aapne, but thik hai, that is fine. Technical jargon. Thik hai, you are right. So, mm -hmm. any other thought or any, uh, tell me uh, in a very layman term, how the simple uh, 
वर्ड्स में कोई समझा सकता है एनीवन कैन एक्सप्लेन दी व्हाई वी नीड द प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेजेस एनी थॉट आई नो यू ऑल नो दिस बट एनीवन व्हाई वी नीड प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेज एनी प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेज प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेज की जरूरत है क्यों to create like uh, apps or different uh, sites why you want to create apps what's the benefit for you as per the user requirement theek hai ye bhi thoda technical ki taraf hai anyone else basic definition programming language kyun why we need them what is the need for the programming languages to communicate with computers To communicate with computers. Why you want to communicate with computers? That's the correct answer. To communicate with computers. But why we need to communicate with computers? Because the data that you want to process or anything that mm. resides within the, within the machine. So we cannot process it. But hmm. we have to probably train our machine to process it. That is why. Okay. But do you think if I will try to explain this to someone like to a to a labor or a shop puller, okay? If I will try to explain that, boy, yeah, इसीलिए programming language चाहिए. You will understand. So you ask them, you know, what is data, right? Try to explain in a in a much simpler way. Anyone else? To perform a particular Because... task, or uh... no? Hmm. Form a particular task. Take a task so perform. Cannot understand the human hmm. language. They cannot understand the human language. Take it. Sure. Let's try to understand it. You all have given uh, almost correct answers. Uh, see, actually, uh, whenever you want something like a repetitive task to be automated, okay. Like take the example of your coffee vending machine, right? I think I'm sure you all have used it, right? Coffee vending machine. Uh, in your offices, it will be there from Coffee Cup per day or some other brand. Yes. So, have you observed that you are just pressing a button, and uh, you are getting coffee? You are press pressing another button. You are getting tea. You are pressing some other button. You are getting hot water. You are pressing some other button. You are getting milk. So, how that is happening? That is like a miracle, right? If someone doesn't know. a uh, programming world they will think oh my god this is a miracle i'm just pressing buttons i'm getting a, and, and i'm getting different different uh, 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 liquids right so how oh, that's that is happening at the back end piche kya chal raha what is happening at the back end there is a program in the back end which do correct right. you have instructed that machine which is in the coffee that is a coffee vending machine you have instructed it you have educated it and that is what known as you have programmed it if someone is pressing this button by right, you have to do this 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 task and as a result you are getting cappuccino correct when you are pressing some other button you have programmed it if the man is pressing this button you have to take tea leaf you have to take sugar you have to take water you have to take milk you have to mix it and then you will get tea at the end so that is why we need programming languages because we have to educate we have to train the machines so that they can do the repetitive tasks on their own with 99.9% accuracy is this point clear clear eh? yeah yes okay take the example of your washing machine you're just pressing a button And it will start performing its tasks. How it is possible? It has been programmed at the back end, right? Motor है लेकिन उसके अंदर भी एक programming है. Your printer, how it is working? There are different different buttons in the printer. How it is working? Yeah, automatically it is doing different different tasks. It has been programmed. Now these are the basic. Uh, and your refrigerator as well. Nowadays you have a smart refrigerators, right? so how they are working uh, automatically on their own it is because they have been programmed coming to bike now even the bike many functionalities of a bike i am not talking about car i am talking about bike when the bike has been programmed these days 
uh, uh, my cousin brother, there was some problem in his bike. He went to local mechanic and he told like, no, you have to go to the showroom. They will update the software. I was surprised to see the influence of the, this program, programming language. This has entered our day-to-day -day life. I hope you all are understanding the importance of programming work, right? And sometimes you guys get frustrated. Oh my God, recession chal rai kya hoga? Guys, it means without software, you literally, you cannot imagine the world to move without software. Imagine kar sakte ho? You cannot imagine. You're a team machine. Do you know how many processes are happening behind it? A lot of processes are happening in fractions of seconds, right? Your online billing system, your online banking system. I think you all know that. Your e-commerce platform, your supply chain systems. Everything is purely based on the programming work. You are, you're shopping. Suppose you went to a particular, uh, eco, uh, uh, what I can say, like a mall or, or Reliance train or somewhere else. You are shopping. You have just paid the bill and immediately you got the message. That next time if you'll purchase for more than 2,000, you'll get something like 500 discount or something. I think you all have noticed it. How it is happening that much quickly, right? The real-time processing is happening. So programming, that is why we need this programming languages so that we can train the machines so that they can repeat the task. But now the world of artificial intelligence, earlier like the pro whatever you're programming using um, C, Java, .NET, yeah, Joby, mainframe and all those things. So that was doing the repetitive task. Now you're giving intelligence to the machine that under this scenario, under this condition, you have to do this or do that and all those things. You are training it, right? You are, you are educating it. That is what we have now, the artificial intelligence. At the end of the day, it is nothing but the programming only. So that is the reason we need these languages so that we can communicate with the computers, right? And at the end of the day, they can do the task what we want. That is why we are learning Python. Okay, once we will understand the Python, we can tell to the computers, Bhai, mere ko ye kaam I want to automate this. Okay, Python, connect with the SQL server and extract this data and then do this analysis using Pandas. Python, connect with the Snowflake and extract data from this particular database and compare data with the SQL server and tell me what is the delta. Suppose if this task you have to do on a daily basis, how many queries you have to execute and how much time it will take? And if you have a, and if you have automated it, so just on a click of a button, it will do it. It will it will do the task for you. And I think within one minute, one minute is less than that, in like ten seconds or fifteen seconds, it can give you the entire result. So that's the reason we we need programming languages. Is this point clear? I explain a little bit in depth, maybe because those who are from the non technical background they can understand. Hope this is clear to everyone. Clear? Yes, yes, no. Yes, yes. Okay. Now, after this, I'm getting background noise. I will request to please go on mute. Now, after this, uh, programming languages are like the, the basic keywords. First of all, you have to understand. Okay, they have a special meaning. So let me start with. Uh, is that demo because I cannot go. Is the one no? Is the one no? Yes, I'll find a book, a book for you here. I'm not looking at Okay, let me start. I think I opened the book. So now. This is PY3 demo. I'm going to take this PY3 demo one. Okay, now see, there are multiple buttons and all those things which we will discuss down the line. Is the font visible or you want me to increase it? Uh, it is visible. Yeah. Don't increase further. 
Hope it is visible to everyone. Yes, sir. Visible? Okay. So first of all, we'll start with the print keyword. Print me kya hota hai? Okay, we'll start with it. Uh, print, when you're writing print, okay, like SQL, if you remember, like I was explaining you the, the meaning for each and every keyword. So likewise in Python, I'll be explaining you the meaning, the special meaning for each and every keyword. Once you know the meaning of all the keywords, so you're very close to learning Python. So when I'm writing print high, it means I'm telling Python. Then, then I will explain you uh, in detail in separate classes what is uh, compiler and all those things. So we'll discuss separately. So if I'm writing print high, and when you have to execute it, you can click this run button or the shortcut key, a shortcut key is shift enter, anyone. To see high is getting printed. If you, it means if you want to print something, okay, if you want to display some message in Python, you have to write print keyword. Is this point clear? Yes. Clear? Okay, good. Very simple. Or uh, And you have to keep it within quotes. Suppose I want to print good morning. So I will write here good morning. And shift enter or run button anyone. See, it is displaying message. Good morning. Okay. Can you tell me, like, uh, in your day to day life, tell me any machine which, first of all, displays some message? Gone says some machine. You all have used it. Tell me which machine. Oh, nobody knows. Your ATM machine, right? If you visit an ATM machine, so first of all, you will see that there will be some messages popping up. Welcome to ICICI Bank or welcome to SBI ATM. And separate uh, and some other messages will be there. Some advertisements will be there, right? So how are you getting those messages? So the sprint statement is displaying those messages. Okay. Now, you want to write print. Uh, let's learn Python. Oh, I'm getting error message. Why I'm getting this error message? Any idea? It is telling it's print is not okay. defined. I think uh, the uppercase, the P is in uppercase. Mm. Okay. So, so, so you mean it is case sensitive. Okay. Yeah. So in SQL, uh, you know, like, uh, the, the, the reserved keywords or the user-defined keywords, if you remember in the day one or day two I have covered, they are not case sensitive, right? In SQL, you can write select in lower case, you can write it in upper case, or you can write it in proper case, you will get the output. You remember this, everyone? Yeah, then, right? But you don't have this freedom in Python. Not only in Python, you don't have this freedom in Python, in Unix, okay, and other programming languages as well. That is why I used to tell, a SQL just needs a strong logic from you. It will never bother you with this cosmetic stuff, the case sensitive and all those things, no. But Python is case sensitive, boss. Even for your reserved keyword, it is case sensitive. See, same statement print I have written here. What's the difference? P is in uppercase here. Here, this P was in lowercase. So here, this P is in uppercase. So that's why I'm not getting the output. So the summary or the conclusion is the keywords are case sensitive in Python. We have written this P in uppercase. That is why I'm not getting the output. Is this point clear? Yes. Now, the moment, okay, these are known as cells, like this is one cell, this is another cell, this is another cell, this is another cell, these are known as cells. Okay. If you want to a new cell, so you can click on this plus button, okay? So, you see, I'm getting a new cell here. So, now if I write this P in lowercase, okay, what will be the output if I will execute this? Do you think I will get the output now? Yeah. 
Oh, see, I'm getting not. So this proves the Python is case sensitive with the keywords. And during this course, many keywords you will learn. So everywhere we have the same definition. It is case sensitive. You have to be very careful while writing it. Hope this is clear so far. Okay. Now then we'll discuss about variables. Any idea what are variables? Anyone? Variables kya hai? Any idea anyone? Temporary storages. Temporary storage. Okay, good. So correct. Variables are like uh, I can tell like in a very simple word like variables are like uh, containers or I can tell like variables are like box or variables are like buckets where you can store something. You might be thinking, okay, then we why to store something? What is the need? That I will show you after some time. But variables are like a containers or, or a storage box where you can store something. Those are known as variables. And this is not only in Python. In all the programming languages, we have this concept of variables. And the definition is same. So don't think, okay, variable is specific to Python only. No, it's, it's, it's consistent. Uh, definition is consistent across all the programming languages. It means you can store something that is what is known as variables. Is this point clear? You get it? Yeah. Now, suppose yeah. if I write, okay, great. Suppose I will write here name equals John. So what is the meaning of this? It means I have a variable. I have a variable whose, whose name is name. And within this variable, what value am I storing? I'm storing John. John. So what is the variable here? Name. Name. And what is the value here? John. 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 Good. So if you want to explain it a little bit in detail, so what happens at the back end? So when you're writing here, name equals John. So in the memory, we will uh, the engine will allocate that okay this particular memory will be allocated to name and within this john will be stored okay so this is what happens at the back end so when you're writing name equals john it means at the back end in the memory especially in the temporary memory a area will be allocated to this variable name and the value john will be stored there it's exactly the same. Suppose I went from Delhi to Bangalore for some official trip. So for sure, I'll be staying in a, in a hotel, right? So they will allocate some room. Let's say room number 201. So it means I can stay here for the temporary basis, maybe for one day, two day, three day, or whatever it may be, right? And after that, I have to vacate it, correct? Similarly, when you write a variable and the value, it means in the memory, a value is getting stored and the name is name here. Or maybe I can write age equals 40. So what is the variable here? Age. Age is the variable. It means quickly the Python will Python interpreter will assign a memory. Okay, age is equal to 40. So it will assign a memory to this, right? And within that, it will store 40. So this is the meaning of variable and the value which you are storing. Uh, those who are very new to the programming world, they must be knowing it and we take care. But still, why we need the variables? So just give me some time. So down the line, I will show you like the significance of variables. Any questions so far? Is it making sense? Are you guys able to understand? Uh, tell me one thing. Am I going uh, from two foundation level? Uh, hope you are not thinking that this is very basic. Hai, we, we all know this. 
Anyone who has this perception, yeah, it is fine. It is fine. Is it, you know, so that it is plan fine. Coding. I think it is fine. fine. Yeah. Okay. And those who already know programming words, so I know this will be very simple for you, but what to do? We have to take care of everyone. Okay, that's why I'm going, I'm starting from the basics because when I will start explaining about list, tuple, set, dictionaries, and then you will you'll be confused with then really queue hai, why we are using this. So that is why I'm setting a, a ground and I'm starting with the variables. Okay. So name equals John, name is variable here, the value is John. Okay. Now, after this, suppose I have to ask Python. Now, here I know okay, name has the value John. Okay. So suppose I have to ask Python. Okay, Python, tell me what I have in this name variable. Suppose I don't know what this variable name is, is storing. So in those cases, if you, if you want that, okay, what this variable is storing, so you can write this and you can execute it. Okay. Oh, I'm surprised. This name variable is storing John. So it should display John here, but it's displaying the name only. Mistake I have done. Anyone? Any idea? Uh, we have enclosed inverted name comma. into inverted commas. So yeah. it is considering it as a string to be printed. Okay, perfect. If you are writing print, and within this, if you have written something within quotes, this name I have written within quotes, it will be treated as a message. So the Python interpreter will treat, ki, oh, this is a message which Tanvir wants to display. And that is why it will display name here. If you if you want to tell to Python, ki, no, 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 I want, I want you to show me the value which this variable name is storing. Then for that, what you have to do, you have to write print and then within parenthesis, just write name, no quotes. If you just write name, Python interpreter will treat it. Ki, oh, this name is a variable and then we want the value for this. So when you will execute it, now see, do you think it is displaying the value for this? this point clear okay so when you're executing it so it means you're asking python interpreter that tell me the value which this name variable is holding then python interpreter will search okay, where is this name in the memory it will try to search name kaha par hai. where is the name where is the name it will find your name is present here then it will try to look into this to what values it is storing oh it is storing john so it will fetch this value and then it will display this at the output console. And as a result, you will find John here. So this is how it works. Hope this is clear. Yes. Similarly, suppose I have a uh, variable age, age equals 40. So what is the variable here? Age. Age, age is the variable. Variable is age. What is the value here? 40. Value is 40. So if you want to print the value of this variable age, what I have to do? Print each. age. Okay. See, I'm getting the value for. But if I write here print age, what is the meaning of this? String. the string as age. What is the meaning? Sorry. We are so this. This. Ha ha! Please go ahead. So this will consider this as a string, and it will print hmm. age instead of forty, instead of the value. Right. Yes. So whenever you will keep something within quotes, that will be treated as a message. So Python interpreter will, will treat it as a message. Yo, then we wants to display the age as a message. That's why when I'm executing it, it is displaying, okay, just age. So you have to be very careful here. If you're not right within quotes, it will be treated as a variable. 
Okay. If you write it within course, it will be treated as a message. Fine. Okay. Now, what will be the output if I will execute it? Uh, I think that... Receive an error. Error? Why? Because address is not defined as a variable defined. before. Oh. It may execute it. Okay. One thing. When I have written here print address, first of all, what is the meaning of this? The meaning of this is we are telling Python interpreter, hey, Python, I have a variable with the name address. Within that variable address, whatever has been stored, please display it. This is the meaning, no? Then Python interpreter, that gentleman, will start searching this address variable in the memory. Where is the address variable? Can you find it? No. No. It's not there. So as a result, the Python interpreter will not be able to find it. So Python interpreter will tell me, sorry, Tanvir, I could not see where is this address variable, right? That's what Python is telling. Address is not defined. It means I could not find it. One thing I want to tell you, the error message, likewise in SQL, the error message in Python is not that much user-friendly. Okay, I want to make it clear. Sometime, uh, sometime it can also happen. You have written thousand line of codes, and the the reason is something different. But you'll be getting output something different. So error messages are not user friendly. Oh, but you will uh, become an expert in Python. So from the error message, then you will understand that problem. There is some issue at this uh, at this line of code. Okay. But in the beginning, I, I know like you will struggle a little bit. So don't worry about it. Okay. So far, is this clear to everyone? Yeah, the clear. Are yeah. you able to understand so far? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. This was a little bit about variables and the print statement. Let me show you a few more examples. Suppose I write here name equals Michael. And then I will write here, right here age equals 35. Okay. And then print. Now listen very carefully. Ah, oh, one plus point about Python is nowadays uh, interviewers, they're not asking tough questions on Python. I remember like during 2015, 16, when we used to take interview. So it was instructed by our product owners try to ask simple questions in SQL. Because at, at that time, the job profiles were not that much SQL centric. Okay. Only in SQL developer or ATL developer roles, we need someone who has a good expertise on SQL. So we used to ask theoretical questions and some simple questions. Nowadays, like if you're going for data analyst job profile or data engineering job profile, if you have attended, you will see like directly they'll be having an Excel sheet and they will be having some data. Uh, and they will tell you, why this is the business problem, write a query for it. No left, right, no theoretical questions, right? But you have some privileges in the case of Python. In Python, they're not asking that much difficult question, okay? So that is why grab this opportunity because especially data analyst job profile is something new in the IT industry. It means just for the last four to five years, it's, it's there. And we don't have uh, matured resources who have a good expertise uh, uh, as a data analyst. And that's the reason like even the non-technical people are getting uh, invited for the interview. So grab this opportunity and I'm sure it will stay only for the next one or two years because same thing happened with Java. During 2011 and 12, Java was in huge demand. And then we have seen in the market, everyone has started learning Java. A lot of resources were there in Java. Okay, so it happens in the IT industry. So if I if I will write here, my name is, okay, I will write here comma name, okay. 
Can anyone give it a try like what I'm trying to do here? Any idea? Uh, you are trying to concatenate my name is. So you are trying to mm -hmm. print the name, but before oh. the name, you are trying to prefix the statement my name is. Okay. 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 Thank you. We have discussed right now. If I write something in quotes, what it will be treated by means in, in which way it will be treated by the Python interpreter? Message. As a message. Message or a string. Intentionally, I'm not telling what is a string because those are from the non technical, they will get confused. Give a string cat. So, later point of time, when I will discuss about the data types, then I will discuss about a string. But that is fine. So, it will be treated as a message, right? Here's a message. Hai. Okay. So, one thing is clear this my name is will be treated as a message. Okay. Now, comma, and then I have written name. How the Python interpreter will treat this name? As a variable. Treat it as a variable. So Python will oh, just a minute. Python will first of all write my name is because this is a message. So there's no confusion. Python will try to display this at the output console. Then Python will see that you have written here name. So Python will understand that this is a variable. So it will start searching this in the memory. When it will search in the memory, it will find that oh, the value is Michael. So it will copy it from there and it will display here. That is when you will execute this. This should be the output. Okay. Let me try to execute it. Is this clear? Yeah, tak sab kuch clear hai. Yes. Any questions so far? Anyone? Sir. Ah, yeah, me... uh, if we take this name variable as a inverted commas and mm. then we print out name mm. in inverted commas. Uh, Mm, okay, good question. See, same logic. If you're writing here, my name is, and if you're keeping this name as well in inverted quotes, anyone? Means what will be the output for this? Any idea? Just share your thoughts. I'm not telling you any exact answer. Chai. Share your thoughts. What will happen? Both the my both name is name. My name is yeah. name. Yeah. Okay. What we have discussed if something in quotes. How it will be treated? As a message. As, As a message. message. Yeah. Okay. Or now this name is a... Aha, please tell it me. Variable name, we take in inverted commas in upper. We are taking name variable, na? where we mm -hmm. name, we store in inverted commas. And in print, we print in inverted commas. Upper, we open inverted mein lete or print. Mein mein. Mm -hmm. Michael print good. Uh, let me do one thing. Let, let's suppress it. Okay. If I'm giving hash, it means this is a comment. Comment means I'm telling Python ki don't execute this one. If you write hash, the hash no. If you write hash, it means you're telling Python don't execute it. Okay. So I'm telling Python to execute this one. Now is this name a variable or message here? Message. 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 Is this clear now? Yes, sir. Is it clear? Hai, sabko? Clear to everyone? Yes. Yes, sir. It is clear, but I think Rohit question is different. Yeah, Rohit. Yeah. Rohit question was is a way, when we have save in a variable name is equal mm -hmm. to Michael, so name mm -hmm. should also in a inverted commas like Michael. So inverted between quotes is name is equal to Michael, and then we want to print a uh, within quotes is name. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Oh, you want to print uh, print Michael as well within quotes. That is what you're asking, right? No, oh. oh, sir. आप ये जो आपने पहले नंबर पर नेम लिखा ना नेम इज इक्वल टू माइकल आप नेम को कोर्ट्स के अंदर लिख दो नेम नेम से पहले भी कोर्ट्स लगाओ नेम के बाद भी जो वेरिएबल लिखा है आपने मतलब वेरिएबल का नाम भी वेरिएबल का नाम भी कोर्ट्स रखो यू आर टेलिंग के इन दिस आउटपुट यू वांट दिस माइकल विद इन कोर्ट्स आई सर फर्स्ट लाइन में ना फर्स्ट लाइन में नेम अच्छा ठीक है तो एक काम करते हैं इसको और सिंपल करके देखते हैं वन रिमूव दिस इसको भी हटाते हैं बिल्कुल सिंपल करके देखते हैं ठीक है नाउ सी आई एम एग्जीक्यूटिंग इट व्हाट हैपन नहीं नेम को भी प्रिंट में नेम को भी इन्वर्टेड को मार्ज में शेयर इस ये तो ये तो सिंपल है आप इसको इन्वर्टेड में रखोगे दिस सी आई एम कीपिंग इट इन इन्वर्टेड कोड्स सो दिस विल बी ट्रीटेड एज अ मैसेज देयर इज नो कंफ्यूजन हियर in print if you are writing something and if it is in inverted quotes it will be treated as a message now the confusion here is listen carefully whenever you are using any variable you don't have to keep it in with quotes ye clear kar lo pehle variables you don't have to keep it in quotes variable will be like this only the value has to be in quotes is this point clear Yes, sir. नहीं क्लियर नहीं है फिर से मैं रिपीट करता हूं दू डोट इन कोर्ट मेक इट क्लियर वेरिएबल कोर्ट में नहीं रहेगा नेम वेरिएबल है वेरिएबल यू नॉट सपोज टू कीप इट इन कोर्ट्स हाउ वैल्यूज हैज टू बी इन कोर्ट्स लाइक माइकल दिस इज इन कोर्ट्स 35 i have not kept it in quotes if i want i can keep this 35 as well in quotes that's a separate topic of discussion ke numbers we should keep it in quotes or not we will discuss it separately as of now just make one thing clear ke variables you don't have to keep it in quotes values has to be in quotes ye clear hai ki nahi right sir that's the rule second point in print a statement if you're writing something and if it is in quotes it will be treated as a message 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 that's why here itself i have covered this yahan par maine cover kiya tha ye wala example this example name is a variable I'm trying to print the value for this name variable, but I'm getting name here. I was expecting John here, but why I'm getting name only? Who will explain this? Who will explain? I made a twist. Because we store in inverted commas. So then, and as you, as you said, in inverted commas, it's treated as a string or a uh, what? सैलरी What will be the output? Salary. Salary. So value five hundred. आना चाहिए ना? Why it should display salary? It should display five hundred, no? Because salary within a quote. That is the message. That's all. Print a statement. If you're writing something within quotes, that will be treated as a message. No further discussion. Is this point clear? Yeah. Clear है सबको 
Yes, sir. Good question. And I appreciate whenever you have any question, any doubt, ask. Huh, one thing will happen sometime, like if I'm explaining a particular topic and you'll be having a question, but I know that will be answered in the next concept. So then I will not answer that immediately. I will ask you to just wait for a few minutes because I'll be about to cover it. Same thing happened in the SQL classes as well, right? Sometimes you will ask question and I will tell you just wait for a few minutes. I'm going to cover it. Because if I will trigger that discussion, maybe you will get confused because maybe we'll be mixing multiple concepts at the same time. Okay, fine. Let's proceed further with a few more examples. Uh, first name, false. Michael. And last name. Achha, 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 achha. Let's go short. So, take a second up there. What will be the output? Error. Not sound. Why error? Uh, because uh, the variable. Two Two different so this uh, the first letter in the variable is a uh, small case mm. but in the print mm. statement uh, you are defining f as uppercase so it will not be able to find first name variable in the memory because it is case sensitive mm. that's all just you have to tell Tanvi this is a variable it is a case sensitive okay so here I have written first name f is in lowercase but when I'm trying to print, I have written F in uppercase. They both are not same. Variables are case sensitive here. Hope this is clear. Okay. Yes, sir. Next example. Now. What will be the output? Michael. Michael. Okay. okay, Michael. Now, once I was taking an interview, okay, for the most pressure role, okay, college password, campus president was going on. I asked the same question. Listen carefully. I asked the same question. If I, this is first name, this is last name, print first name, what will be the output? Then the candidate answered, it will throw error message. I was a little bit surprised. I asked why it will throw error message. His logic was actually correct. Okay. He told K Tanvir, okay, you're using the variable first name. So Python will remember Kecha, the first name will be storing Michael. Then you are having a variable last name and it will be scoffed. So Tanvir, what will happen? In the memory, it will allocate first name to be Michael. But when the Python interpreter will execute it, it will override it. And this will become last name. And this will be scoffle. So Python will not be able to find this first name. And that's why it will throw error message. Do you think this is correct explanation? And if it is incorrect, where this is incorrect? Anyone who wants to give it a try? Sorry, sir. Can you no, please I... a little bit elaborate? Uh, I'm not understanding. Okay, sure. I'll explain this. Like, I asked the same question once I was taking an interview. I asked the okay. same question to a candidate. Okay, by first name equals Michael, last name equals Scofield. Print first name. What will be the output? The candidate replied, Ki, tell me this will throw error message. I was a little bit surprised. I asked, Ki, okay, why it will throw error message? Candidate told me that will first name Michael. Hai. So first of all, in the memory, it will allocate a space for Michael and the value will be Michael. Okay. And then when the Python will see that there is another variable last name, so it will override this. So now the last name and the value will be a scoffle. So now when you're trying to search for first name Tanvir, there's no first name and that's why the engine will throw error message. Mm. So you have to tell me where is the mistake in this explanation? How mm -hmm. mistake was candidates there? 
So the mistake I think is since the name of two variables are different, so mm. uh, the the Python will allocate two different memory blocks for first name and last name. It will not mm. overwrite first name with last mm. name. But okay. if there was a condition in which let's say in fourteenth row you have given first name is Michael, and in fifteenth mm. row you have given again first name let's say is Rahul. And then you mm. will try to print first name. It will print Rahul in that case because Michael mm. will be overrated with Rahul. Mm. Okay, good explanation. So the overwrite concept was misunderstood by that candidate actually. There is an overwrite concept in each and every programming language. But what he was having the understanding that was incorrect. See, when the interpreter will read this first name equals Michael, so for sure memory will be allocated for this variable first name and the value will be Michael. Okay. When the interpreter will read this last name equals Coffee, then a separate memory will be allocated for this. Is this clear? It is not like suppose I am in a hotel and I'm staying in two zero one. So then we are staying in two zero one. And then there's a new guest, let's say Rahul. So hotel management will tell me, Tanvir, you have to vacate because Rahul has booked now. That doesn't happen, right? I have booked for certain days. So even if someone is wants to stay, they cannot ask me to vacate, right? Got it? So maybe for Rahul, they will allocate some other room. Let's, let's maybe 202. The same thing happens here. A memory will be allocated for the first name and the Michael will be stored here. Then a memory will be allocated for last name and a scoffle will be stored here. It's not like it will override this and a scoffle will be stored here. No. So that was the incorrect explanation. I hope it is clear now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, if it is clear, I have a question for you. Please take your time, then answer. Please don't be in a hurry. Take care. What will be the output for this piece of code? What will output be the output? Scofield. Scofield. Any other thought, anyone? Scofield. Okay. No. Not produced copy. Let's try to understand here. These are the basic building blocks. This has to be crystal clear. Because when I will teach you complex data types, list, tuple, set, dictionary. If it is not clear, then you will struggle there. And then further in Pandas, NumPy, we will study about array series. So this has to be crystal clear, boss. If someone is not able to understand, you have full freedom. You have to ask n number of times. Take care. So first of all, Python interpreter will execute this piece of code. First name equals Michael. A memory will be allocated for this variable first name and the value will be Michael. Is this clear? Is this clear? This yeah. is clear, right? Yeah, yes, clear. Okay. This is clear. Okay, good. What will happen? The interpreter will go to the next line. It will say, Oh, then we has written first name is Scottfield. We have a very interesting concept here. You remember in SQL, like uh, if you have created a table with the name employee, if you're trying to create another table with the same name employee, to SQL make you out What will happen uh, if you try to create another table with the same name? It will not let you it create another table, not create good. Will not create it will throw it a message that table of you does already exist, right? Right, right? And then we used to drop that table up to go share the right? I used to yeah. drop that table, then I used to create it again, right? So in the world of SQL, if you're trying to create another table with the same name, it's very straightforward. I will not allow, we will not allow you to create another table with the same name, right? It's a straightforward. But in Python, it's a little bit confusing. But my nice. 
you have a variable with the name first name and you're storing Michael here. Then you have written again first name with the scope fill. So first of all, engine will not allocate a new memory for this variable. Pahle to is point ko clear karo sab koi. For this variable first name, which is exactly same as this, a new memory will not be allocated. Is this point clear? clear Is this point clear? Clear. A new memory will not be allocated. Now you have the values. You have the values copied here. So what Python will understand from this it will treat you then we wants to store now scoffel in the same memory locate which was allocated to this variable first name so what it will do now instead of his michael it will override this with his coffin so now what we have in this variable first name this is known as overrides. The value has been overrided from Michael to Scoffel. And that is why now if you're asking Python, ki by display karo what you have in this first name, so it will display Scoffel and that is what is happening here. Is this explanation clear? Yes, sir. In SQL, we can't overwrite, and in Python, we are we can overwrite. What's the reason to put on each other? Like, why? Yeah, reason, sorry. See, uh, uh, that uh, override, see, 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 that override which I have told you in SQL, okay. So, you can also uh, override in SQL, but for that, you have to use update a statement, right? That is a different yeah. one. Yeah. Got it? Yeah. The help of update, you can override in SQL as well. But here you don't have that flexibility. It will directly override the value. That is what I'm telling you. Oh, now got okay. it. Got it. Yeah. Yes. Still, yeah. May, we have studied about update, right? When you yeah. update permanently, the value will change. Okay. Now, proceeding further with the next example. I hope everything is clear so far to everyone. Okay. Now. New example, and this is a question for you all. Think over it, take your time, and then answer. Hmm, confusing. I know this is confusing. What will be the output for this? Michael Schofield. You will get screen. both Michael Schofield, or you will get only Michael, you will get only Schofield, or you will get here a message. We will get both Michael Schofield without space. Okay. Any other thought? Why without a space? Uh, because we have not uh, defined any space in between the name between the variables. Okay, we sure. have. Chika, chika. Any other thought, anyone? Well, just share your thoughts here. Come on. What will be the output if I will execute it? Same, sir. Michael Scofield. Michael Scofield. Check it. Let me execute it. Michael Scofield. Why I have taken this example? First of all, point number one. You are allowed to display multiple variables at the same time. In all the previous examples, I'm just displaying the value of one variable, right? Print first name. Print first name. Print name, print age, print address, just one variable. But here I'm trying to print the value of more than one variable. So point number one, make it clear. You have freedom. It is allowed to display value of more than one variable. So that is why you're getting the value, Michael. You're getting the value, Scoffred. Is this clear? Okay. Suppose I have a variable age equals 40. What will be the output now? Hmm. 
Michael Scofield 40. Okay. Michael Scofield 40, right? Now, I have, I'm trying to show the value of three variables. It is working perfectly here. Okay. Another example. Gotcha, sorry. Let's go and go. Hmm. If you time compare this cell number 20, this means the age could be a target. Hmm. Hmm. Compare this cell number 23 and this 22. What is the difference? What is the difference what you understood from this? Space. Hmm. Space, right? Okay. Here, by default, you're getting a space, but here you're not getting a space. The reason is, this is concatenate operator. When using concatenate operator, you will not get any space between two variables, value of two variables. Okay, but just if you're writing the two variables separated by comma, so you are getting a space by default. Okay, now, one more example I want to show you here. And my first name is this. Okay, what will be the output for this query? My first name is Michael without any spaces and last name is Scofield without any spaces. Okay. If it is clear? Yes, sir. Yes. This is message. You're getting the message here. This is a variable. This is not in quotes. You're getting the value of this variable, Michael. And last name. You're getting and last name here. And then again, the value of this variable last name. You're getting the value here, scopper. If you're thinking why there's no space, you can give a space here. You'll be getting a space now. Now there's a space in between. So you can display the message and the value of a variable simultaneously, which is allowed. Sir, my first name is inverted commas. Like, plus ke baad or plus ke No, 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 no. This inverted quote is for this one. And this inverted quote is for this one. Okay. First, yeah. humne, we, don't, we have not kept this in inverted quotes, no. This inverted quote has started here. It, it will end here. And this inverted quote has started here. And the sense here. Yeah, no fine. Here? Take care. Now, what will be the output for this query? One minute. What will the output for this query? Same output with spaces. Yeah. Same output with the spaces, okay? Mm -hmm. And there will be two spaces after first name because one will be before and where we have explicitly mm. given a space and one because we have given a comma. Okay. Fine. Good. Now tell me what you understood from this. What is the difference between, you see, I have already explained here this concatenate operator plus and the significance of this comma. So 
this two are the same means same differences are there where I have used plus here for concatenate operator and I have used comma here. The output is in front of you. What is the difference? We'll explain. Can difference says me. I'm getting a space here. Yeah. Because I have just written comma, right? Comma. right. But here we have given plus sign. So that is why there is no space between my first name and Michael. There's no space, no? And we are getting a space here. Okay. Hope this is clear. So, so yeah. far we have discussed about the variables. The values, how to store in a variable, print a statement, the different flavors of print, how to print multiple variables, variables at the same time, how to print a message and a variable at the same time, right? Okay, now, suppose I will write here weight equals 70.5, okay? So the variable is weight here and the value is 70.5 and if I'm trying to print it, I'll write print weight, the 70.5, okay. So it means you can store a number, uh, you can store something in decimal, you can store some messages like uh, alphabets uh, in a variable, these all are allowed, okay, fine. Now, another example, I write here, let's say uh, x equals, and what example I can tell 10. And okay, so this is, yeah, Rahul, you asking some question? Uh, sir, just one question. So until mm -hmm. now, uh, all the variables that we have defined are alphabets. Can we have a variable name with a special character or a number? Uh, there are certain rules for the variables. Okay, like you should not start with the, uh, uh, what you can say like a special characters and all those things. Then there's the certain rules for the numbers, which I will give you. I will mention the rules uh, based on which and it is, you're right. We don't have that much flexibility and freedom. Okay, you can write variable with any name that is not allowed. There are certain restrictions, which I will cover down the line. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Now, few basic things like uh, I'm writing at X equals 10. And I'm writing here x equals, let's say, Tom. Then I'm writing print x. What is the what, what, what is part of the value? Tom. Tom. So Tom. If you take the latest value, right? Okay. So here, what is the data type of x? Data type means what type of data it is storing. So here x is storing number. So we can tell the data type is integer or number, okay? Here, X is storing alphabets. So if someone will ask you, what is the data type? So it will be string. So whenever a variable is storing alphabets, the data type will be a string, fine? Now suppose I will write here A equals 10, B equals 20, and I will write here print A plus B. So now what is that part? 30. It means we can do mathematical calculations as well. Got it? We can do certain calculations as well with the help of Python. And suppose if it is minus, I'm getting the negative. So you're storing values in different variables and then you are asking Python ki bhai batao what will be the output. This is just an, just an indication I'm showing you ki why Python is used uh, like anything in data analysis. You are storing values somewhere in variables and you want to do some analysis, addition, subtraction or some other complex calculations it can do for you. Okay. Uh, fine. Uh, and then similarly, down the line, I will show you multiplication, division, remainder, and all those things. Now, suppose I write here name equals uh, input. Please enter your name. Now, 
now for this um, print name. Now, there's an input keyword. Whenever you want the user to provide something, we use input keyword. Can you take me from it? Like, let's see, when I executed it, the Python interpreter is asking me, please enter your name. Suppose, then read. Now, see, it is displaying, or I can write message here. Enter name is. Enter name is Tanvir. So here I'm trying to show you, okay, you can ask a value from the user. In all the previous examples, I have hard-coded the value, no? A equals 10. I have hard-coded. Many hard-coded here, right? Weight equals 70.5. I have hard-coded. First name equals Michael. Last name equals Scofield. I have provided these values. But in the real world, what happens? The machine, many times, machine has to ask value from the user. Ki bhai, kya aapko? Can you tell me some example in your daily life where the machine is asking value from you? Is there any form where we put our name is kind of thing? Any online form? You have kuch example, but day to day life. Pe. Anyone? When we are trying to log in, to... is a drone. Are you confused? Can, can you repeat? Go one by one, please. Cash withdrawal for right. ATM machine. Ah, okay. That's so simple. It's simple. Kya hoga, yaar? When you have to withdraw uh, uh, money from ATM machine, the moment you will go, ATM machine will start bombarding with you with, with questions. By savings account, current account, kya hai? enter your password, enter the amount, right? Then it will ask okay, you want uh, receipt or not. So the machine is asking value from you correct that is what the input keyword is used there no so whenever you have to ask value from user you have to use the input keyword another example you are at airport you have to get your boarding pass right and suppose you have only uh, uh, hand baggage so sometimes you will go to that kiosk and you will enter the it will ask for the PNR, the file details, and then you're having flexibility to select your seats, right? That is again the machine is asking values from you, and you're providing the values, and accordingly the machine is responding to you. Right? So how it is happening? Input. Another simple example. You have to log into Gmail account. It will ask for your Gmail ID and the password, right? How it is happening? Input. Is this point clear? Here. Another example. Achha, if it is clear, tell me the output for this. Name equals Rahul. Location equals Chennai. Example. Okay. What is the meaning of this code? What is meaning of What I am trying to do here? First, we are storing uh, Rahul in the variable name and the location in the variable location. And uh -huh. then we are asking the user to enter a name and then whatever name he enters, let's say he enters uh, Tanvir. Then... Uh -huh. This Tanvir is getting stored in name. So my original name Rahul is getting overwritten by the name, which is the input provided by the user in row number three. So now if you will run this code, it will not print oh. Rahul. It will print whatever name you provide as an input. Okay. And plus, uh, if by oh. default, it will provide Rahul <clears throat> if you are not entering any. Yeah. Music. 
Just asking your name. Please enter your name. Because my name is Tom. Oh. Just printing my name is Tom. But I have given the value Rahul here. Why? Is the value getting overridden here? Yeah. Because of row number right. three. Yeah. Right. Yes. So, this is what happens sometime when you try to reset the password. Is this point clear? Okay. So, the new value which you have provided, that will be... Uh, that will be given more priority as compared to the hard-coded value. Here I have hard-coded key name is Rahul, but it's asking from the user. So this value will take more precedence. Okay. So fine then, I will stop here. So generally the class will be from eight to 10 and we'll take a break in between 10 to 15 minutes. It's almost one and a half hour. So I will stop here. This was just a basic demo class. Okay. And uh, the next class will be from next week, Saturday, sharp 8 to 10 a.m. IST. And uh, the process is simple. I know most of you from my SQL batch, those who are interested in enrolling for the course, you just have to uh, connect with me or in the group, you might see I or Pridos will be other admin. You can ping us. The recording for this will be shared, I think, in another two hours. And today's recording will be on YouTube. And this notes, everything will be shared with you. So before I stop the class, do you have any question, anyone? Anything about the score, syllabus, format, any other stuff, anyone? Sir, uh, one question. Like yeah. in SQL, uh, we perform any type of operation, like analytical operation or uh, the complex query up in SQL, mein karte ho, same kind of program we can uh, write in Python language or kuch, uh, Limitation है SQL की या Python की? Uh, yeah, that is another thing. Uh, SQL and Python they both are needed in data analysis. But as for my experience, SQL has its own capabilities. Okay, as far as fetching the data from database, no one can compete with SQL. First of all, make it clear. It can have its own capabilities. Python has the programming capabilities. Python has the capabilities to to have that loop right for loop while loop and many of the instructions you can do with the help of python which sql cannot do okay then python has the capabilities of data analysis using pandas and numpy which you can do very easily with pandas and numpy but if you try to do the same thing using sql it cannot do for you then you have to make then you may have to write complex queries so in certain aspects sql is good in certain aspects python is good but I think if you're comparing both of them, so I think that's not a good topic. No, I don't think so. Because they both have their own capabilities. Huh. One thing is, is clear, okay, both are needed. If you know both of them, you it will they both will help you in data analysis task. Sometimes, like when I work in project and my suppose my client has asked same report, okay, to be uh, generated on a daily basis. Okay. If I'm doing that using SQL, I have to write the same query on daily basis. But if I know Python, I can automate that SQL query with the help of Python. That is why if you know the both SQL and Python, there's a perfect combo actually. Hope I answered your question. Yes, sir. That's the my question. But if interviewer yeah. asked me, like uh, this is, uh, he provided me a particular scenario and asked mm -hmm. me to write a SQL query. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm writing that SQL query. And mm -hmm. again, he asked me to convert that into Python code. So uh -huh. that's similar that. logic. Haan. So oh my hmm. sakta na, similar logic. Kar sakte ho. And that is why whenever someone joins my data analytics course, I strongly recommend I pale SQL karo. Kyo? Now whatever I will teach you in Python, I will correlate it with SQL as well. So here it will be easy for you to understand ke, oh, achha, achha, SQL mein ye ho tha, Python may or it will be easy for you. Okay, but I'm not Very telling that SQL is a prerequisite to learn Python. Okay, I'm not telling this. And not only me, uh, uh, means no other trainer, no one can tell this. That's a question. Uh, but uh, those who have already taken SQL course from me, then now this Python 
तो आपको थोड़ा वो कंपेयर करने में जैसे रिकर्सिव सिटी आई हैव टॉट यू इनफाइनाइट लुक आई विल शो यू द सेम थिंग यूजिंग फॉर लुक हेयर तो फिर आप बोलोगे यार पाइथन में तो बड़ा आसानी से इनफाइनाइट लुक कर दिया यूजिंग फॉर लुक बट इन रिकर्सिव सिटी एस क्यूर इट वाज अ लिटिल बिट टीडियस दे बोथ हैव देयर ओन प्रोस एंड कॉन्स एंड इफ यू नो सीक्वल देन आई एम वेरी मच श्योर दिस जर्नी इन पाइथन विल बी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड इजीली यू कैन कोरिलेटेड ओके ठीक है गुड क्वेश्चन रोहित होप आई आंसर द क्वेश्चन ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इन पाइथन वॉट डेटा सोर्स विल वी बी यूजिंग विल दैट बी फ्लैट फाइल लाइक एक्सेल सी एस बी और विल दैट बी सर्वर बेस्ड समथिंग फ्लैट फाइल होगा एंड इफ यू गाइज आर इंटरेस्टेड तो आई कैन यूज सर्वर एज वेल जो भी कहोगे सिक्वल सर्वर या स्नो फ्लैक वी कैन यूज दैट एज वेल इट्स वेरी सिंपल इट्स जस्ट अबाउट कनेक्टिंग इट इफ यू विल आस्क की भाई सिक्वल सर्वर डेटा बेस से कनेक्ट करते हैं तो जस्ट आई विल कनेक्ट यूजिंग ड्राइवर्स विद दैट पर्टिकुलर सर्वर वेरी सिंपल Okay and, and trust me it is simpler as compared to excel or flat file because okay, flat file mein you have to take care of the format as well but in the server orderly already data is loaded in a particular table in a correct format so just you have to extract it from there and you can do the analysis understood yeah. and sir so just last question so let's say we are using sql server and we have a table in sql server where we have the raw data and uh -huh. let's suppose i don't know how to transform that raw data with the help of sql statement but i know doing it with python now uh -huh. is there a possibility in python to write back the data back to sql server that is based on your skills the same question uh, i think uh, uh, right now uh, uh, right now uh, that was our same question so okay. Okay. yes you can translate it into vice versa you can do okay, okay. but again again i am telling it's not that much straight forward sometimes it will be very tedious okay uh, but in most of the times you can do it we have written and in, in on my linkedin as well you will see many times i will ask this question okay, okay this is the question uh, you you have to write a query in sql and the, for the same question you have to write a query in python you can do it but actually uh, to be honest when you work in project no usme aisi koi zarurat nahi padti wahan to bas means in project aisa hota hai ki yaar kaise bhi karke either sql python karke likho aur kaam ban jaye okay ha in interview sometime interview can ask you this type of questions but that will be for the senior roles okay usme for like mid level ya fir junior roles mein they will not roast you that much okay but if you have that perception ki yaar mere ko ye bhi aana chahiye to wo to bahut badhiya hai yaar उससे अच्छा कुछ नहीं हो सकता है ओके थैंक यू गुड राहुल एनी अदर क्वेश्चन आई थिंक राहुल यू आर आल्सो इन द इन द करंट बैच ओनली आई थिंक बुकिंग बैच पहले ही था शायद आप हां दो तीन बैच पहले था हां ओके या यस एनी अदर क्वेश्चन एनीवन या एक्चुअली आई एम नॉट फ्रॉम द आईटी बैकग्राउंड आई एम फ्रॉम केमिस्ट्री बैकग्राउंड बट नो आई हैव टू डू मशीन लर्निंग फॉर दिस आई हैव टू लर्न पाइथन my question is that okay. is this course will be enough for me to do machine learning no 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 it will not i i cannot tell okay one thing i want to make it very means crystal clear for everyone dekho what all job profiles i have written okay mm -hmm. in and this is for everyone the good question i think batul right yeah uh, good good question you have asked so python i am not telling you python alone is sufficient for any of this job profiles no strictly no baad mein mere ko mat kehna ki aapne kaha tha no data engineering if you are thinking that you can learn python you can enter the data engineering no not possible for data engineering apart from python you should know sql you should know any cloud you should know py spark and you should know some uh, scheduling jobs platforms as well SQL SQL developer only Python Python no no apart from Python, you should know. SQL, you should know. PL SQL, you should know basics of ETL data analyst only Python no Python SQL Power BI advanced Excel ETL tester Python SQL basics of ETL basics of testing okay 
So, and similarly, if you're thinking about machine learning, only Python, no, not possible. Apart from Python, you have to know maybe our language as well. Then the SQL, the basic of a statistics. Okay, these all are needed there. Hope I answered your question, Batu. Yeah, yeah, okay, thank you. Um, no is there any course for machine learning? You can connect I'll... with me separately. I will uh, recommend you. Okay, thank you. Okay, because I have to understand your educational background and how much time you have. Okay, with what intention you're preparing for machine learning so that I can I can guide you accordingly. You connect with me after this class. Okay, thank you. No uh, problem. Any other question, anyone? Yeah, so Tanvir, currently I'm working as a database developer. Okay. So to boost the profile, it is means it is good to learn Python. Ah, yeah, database developer, me to aapko na chahiye. Database no, I mean, developer. I'm doing SQL, PLSQL. I mean, it's Eight, nine okay, years old. Okay, you are working with SQL and PLC. You see, if you, have, if you are asking question, I have to be very straightforward. Don't take it in a negative way. Okay. In the current project, SQL and PLC is working with SQL and PLC. But if you will try to switch, I am very much sure they will ask Python. I am telling you. The reason is, the informatics are tool or talent. You will use it from this way. Maybe. So, no, I don't use it from this way. I mean, there will be team. Hogi. मैं तो सिर्फ एसक्यूएल पीएलएसक्यूएल पे अपना पूरे लिख देता हूं मतलब पीएलएसक्यूएल पे अपनी वो लिख देता हूं अगर हमें मतलब ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन और सब हां जो भी प्रोसीजर फंक्शन बना के सब लिख देते हैं वो तो राइटिंग ठीक ठीक फिर आपका पीएलएसक्यूएल अच्छा होगा बिकॉज़ यू आर क्रिएटिंग पाइथन बेस्ड ऑन दिस सो वो तो बढ़िया होगा आपका बट माय रिकमेंडेशन इज शशांक यू लर्न पाइथन एज़ वेल क्योंकि इफ यू विल ट्राई टू स्विच नो और डू वन थिंग आफ्टर दिस क्लास सर्च डेटा इंजीनियरिंग जॉब प्रोफाइल एंड अब होता क्या है ना कि समटाइम इन फ्यू कंपनीज दे विल आस्क यू ओके सीक्वल और इफ यू नो सीक्वल फिर सीक्वल चलो ठीक है ले लेते हैं फ्यू कंपनीज दे विल आस्क सीक्वल एंड पाइथन याद रखें कि यूनिक शेल स्क्रिप्टिंग भी पूछते हैं इन फ्यू कंपनीज ओके बट बट दैट इज नॉट अ मैंडेटरी स्किल्स राइट सो माय रिकमेंडेशन इज दोस हु आर इन द डेटा इंजीनियरिंग और सीक्वल ईटीएल डेवलपर आपको तो पाइथन सीखना ही चाहिए ओके ओके मतलब जैसे एसक्यूएल पीएलएसक्यूएल सीख लिया और पाइथन सीख लिया तो उसके बाद मतलब जॉब्स हैं मतलब बहुत हैं यार बहुत हैं देखो ये जो कॉम्बिनेशन है ना इस सीक्वल के साथ मैंने पीएल सीक्वल भी डाल देता हूँ क्योंकि पीएल सीक्वल रिपोर्टिंग वाली जरूरत नहीं पड़ती लेकिन डेवलपर साइड में तो जरूरत पड़ता है एकदम जरूरत पड़ता है क्योंकि आपको फंक्शंस प्रोसीजर्स परसों स्ट्रिगर्स से पूरा because generally in the companies they use the informatica tool so they make the mapping in the back end okay yeah yeah so you should learn python as per my understanding and experience okay okay good and one more thing for everyone i will recommend that don't only focus on your current project so you can work so much this is for everyone okay i'm not telling only from shashank's perspective because i have suffered this that in this project you have learned this thing you have done this work you have done everything but yeah, when you will switch in some other company, you know, for some other job profile, so then what happens is that they ask everything. So that is why don't take risk. And and like already I mentioned, like currently the IT industry, lot of turbulence is there. Nobody knows what will happen in the future. One thing is clear that you enrich your skills. Okay, at least SQL, PL, SQL, Python, Power BI, Advanced Excel, you have to learn it. If you are not learning it, I am saying clear cut, you will be suffering. Daily, at least, take a half hour time. It will not be excused that Tanvir, I am super busy, I am very busy, I am very busy. At least one hour you spend, and you will have to learn all these things. Wherever you learn, wherever you learn, make a routine and try to learn this. Because AI, AI is a whole buzzword. At the end of the day, AI works on top of ATL only. If it is not ATL, then AI can't be done in the world. It works on top of ATL. If you have to learn ATL, then you will have to learn Nothing but a subset of ATL. If you know this, slowly you can enter the world of uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence. Right? Okay, so fine. Any other question, anyone? No questions? Okay, fine. So thanks a lot for attending and I really appreciate the questions which you all have asked. So we'll connect next week, Saturday at the same time. So thanks a lot, everyone. Take care. Bye. Thank you, sir. It's productive. Thank you. Thank you, Tanvir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.